Hello and welcome to City Edition, the City of Bend's video news magazine. I'm Justin Feinstone. A new high-performance CPR technique used by Bend Fire and Rescue is saving lives here in Central Oregon like never before. In fact, the department has doubled its cardiac arrest survival rate since last year. Here are two survivors who share their amazing stories about how Bend paramedics saved their lives. Recently, we went to Seattle to learn from the top research docs in the country about how to perform resuscitation better. During that time, we were taught high-performance CPR, which is a different version than that's currently out there that AHA teaches the rest of the country. It's basically uninterrupted CPR for two minutes, not stopping for anything. Um, the focus here is that we want to move blood around nonstop. Even the advanced life support stuff we were doing where we put in IVs and we put in tubes to breathe for people's mouth, we know those interruptions actually were affecting outcomes. So currently, the most important thing that we can do is CPR uninterrupted for two minutes. The quality of the CPR is so important because in the past we were pausing a lot and what that did is that didn't give, every time we paused we would lose the coronary perfusion pressure and the cerebral perfusion pressure. So when you say two minutes, AHA's guideline is every two minutes we switch compressors and we know from the science that those compressors get tired so we're very religious about switching our compressors every two minutes but it's a two-man team that's working the patient at all times. One person's breathing for the patient basically once every 10, but there's no interruption like the old way we were doing it. The new way is to breathe in once every 10. One day in September, my wife and I went uh, bicycling down at Sun River and I felt a little out of breath. My chest was kind of tight. Came back after a dinner that night and my arm started to hurt. And uh, that didn't seem right, and so we debated whether to call 911 or to have her drive me to the hospital. The logical thing at the time was that we better call 911. Mr. Cullis was very fortunate that uh, we were there and that he called 911 that he did when he did. They probably showed up eight minutes later or so. The first guys from uh, the uh, Highway 20 station, and then the other guys from Tumalo showed up with the ambulance and they loaded me in there and on the way to the hospital, apparently my heart, I found late, out later, my heart stopped for six minutes. He actually coded um, in the back of the medic. Uh, it was a witnessed arrest. So from the time, we actually performed maybe one cycle of CPR, shocked him, and then he came back. Uh, he coded again in the, at the hospital. I heard that they, uh, they worked on me for quite a while in there and I'm very, very grateful that they did. He got defibrillated and he got advanced CPR right when he needed it, and those are the optimum times when you w will have a favorable outcome. Now I, I've got, I guess, the proper blood flow to my body, and I feel great. I feel actually better than I did before I had the heart attack. To see Mr. Cullis today uh, is very re rewarding. I saw him um, a week after uh, his event and I almost didn't recognize him the color in his face. Uh, he just seemed like a completely different person. Without the Ben paramedics, I truly believe I would not be around. Um, I was very active uh, hiker, biker and mostly hiking and out every day and never any symptoms at all. Nothing. No blood pressure problems, no heart problems, nothing. And then just one afternoon, I just fainted. Basically, I just fainted. In Eileen's case, this is not that uncommon. She had no warning that she had heart disease. In fact, she did not have any vessel disease. There was an electrical failure that caused her to go into cardiac arrest. That's often the most common symptom is sudden cardiac death. So the lucky ones are the ones who have chest pain and have a heart attack. My granddaughter called 911 and the, uh, the EMTs came right away. They came pretty quickly within about five minutes and started CPR and administered CPR for at least 20 minutes, probably a little longer, and administered six shocks to get that heart started again. Things aligned perfectly. We had a couple crews close. We got, got in there early and we had plenty of crews to rotate through. Yeah, within two months I was completely back to my former activities. I was hiking regularly. So I have a defibrillator inserted in the top part of my chest with wires that go into the chambers of the heart that will kick in if, my heart, if the electrical problem starts again. I'll never forget when I called her the first time. 
I called her on the phone. I said, Eileen, how are you this morning? She said, I'm just sitting here having coffee and doing Sudoku. It's like, okay. So, so I could check the neurologically intact box with her. It's like, she's doing great. Without the Bend Fire Department, I would not be here today, obviously. It, it just took so much work and CPR and shocks to get that heart going again. I would definitely not be here without those guys. They just did not quit until they got my heart started again. And it's very much appreciated by me and my whole family. So over the years doing field resuscitation, a, a save, a, a legitimate save was a rare exception. Uh, we had a period this year, this past year in 2014, where we had three cardiac arrest saves in a 10 day period, which is, is amazingly encouraging to us as providers. Seeing a patient come back to his family is the ultimate reward I think that any, any firefighter, police officer, dispatcher, doctor can get. This is why we all got into this, this job.